Hi guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. Uh, I've been getting a lot of people wanting to do a uh, walk around on my rig. Uh, it's nothing special. It's a budget friendly. <laughs> it's just an old TJ. I've had it for about nine years now and it was kind of a mall crawl when I picked it up. So a lot of this stuff is stuff I've done to it. It really just had a lift on it with some tires and wheels which they're long gone and I've replaced them with these uh, Maxis that I love by the way so all the uh, mods are basically mine there's really nothing that uh, was on it when I got it so it is a 97 which is the first year for the TJ it's an auto 4.0 liter it had roughly a hundred thousand on it when I got it nine years ago and now it has 140 on it so I've I've used it for a secondary vehicle and just a fun toy to play with so about 40,000 miles has all been four-wheeling off-roading a little bit back and forth to work. I like to drive it. I catch myself driving it more than I drive my other vehicle. So uh, other than that, it's just a, it's just a base model sport. It has no lockers, no gear change yet. I have uh, another axle I'm wanting to swap out for the rear. And when I do that, I'll change gears. But right now it's just running straight stock 307 gears with a three speed automatic. I've had it for eight years, nine years, and just, it gets me where I wanna go and a little slower than most, but hey, no problems yet. So I haven't changed anything, but when I do upgrade the axle, I'll change out the gears and go to a lower gear because uh, just to give it a little more power. But until then, I'm just gonna keep running what I'm running with no problems. I don't wanna spend any money on these axles because there's a Dana 30 and a Dana 35 and they're known not to be strong once you start putting lockers and stuff in them. So that's something I will not do. Uh, but other than that, this green color, it's a kind of a rare color. You don't see a lot of, lot of them out there. I've done uh, some pinstriping to it, kind of done some topographical. Uh, pinstriping on it. And it's something that I just free-handed it's not a wrap so that was just me getting bored during COVID and saying I need something to do so I started doing that next thing you know it is what it is I love it so I'm gonna leave it on there and if it comes to a point where I want to change it I just tear it off so front bumper is a cheap Smitty built it was actually on here when I got it and what I've done is I've put a Barnes four-wheel drive bull bar on it and just welded it on there they just sent me the bar and I welded it up so that's all that the bumper has different than just the base cheapo bumper but it's good good steel good metal to be built off of so that's what I did cheap Harbor Freight reliable uh, 12,000 pound Badlands it's the first generation works works every time I need it Recently was underwater. If you watch some of my other video, still works fine. I've got uh, some yellow pod lights up here, just the cheap Amazon pod lights, 35, 40 bucks. They work good in the dust on the trails and the Ozarks, chasing each other to the next trailhead. Plenty, plenty of lights to see. I even added one up here. It's another yellow, which works well. Just a cheap. I think $30 so uh, I'm not one to spend a lot of money on lights actually the high lift jack was up here when I bought the Jeep so the mall crawl guy had a lift at 35s and this high lift jack that never gets used but it's on there and he built this built this bracket or this mount so I can't can't take it off there because it's, it's a good mount in it dual purpose for my light. If you can see behind it, I have a River Raider snorkel 
the old mushroom style, more like a Hummer style. So I just, and it's another budget. Uh, the actual mushroom head with the just everything you see out here visible from the outside was probably roughly 60 bucks, 70 bucks maybe for this. And as you'll see later when I open the hood, I bought the Amazon snorkel kit and built it my own, built my own off of the actual old intake and plumbed it through the cowl and out. So it, gets, it pulls fresh air all the time and you're never, never getting that hot air out from under the motor. These are notorious for heat soaking and the, the exterior heat of the motor under the hood. As you can see, I have no louvers yet because I really haven't had any heat soak once I put the heat reflective uh, over the header that you'll see later. I really don't want to cut the hood. I like I like the, the way it is now, so that may come in the future, I'm not sure. Poison Spider, of course, is what everybody uses, but I thought about putting just the louvers in and leaving the, leaving the bulk of the hood still there. Haven't done that yet. I'm running Maxxis 16 inch wheels or 16 inch tires, 35 by 16 inch tire. So they're a two, 315, 315 actually on a 16. Uh, these are BF Goodwrench, or no, I had BF Goodwrench, apologize. I had BF Goodwrench KM2s. When I first bought these wheels, I bought them as a package they were used. I run them until they were wore out and then I decided to go with something different. I went with these Maxxis razors, I love them. They probably have three years of wheeling on them and there's still plenty of tread on here. So absolutely love them. They're 10 ply, they're pretty heavy. My makeup for it on the wheel, the wheel's pretty light. These are Mickey Thompson Classic 2s with the simulator beadlock. So they're not true beadlocks, they're just simulators. And I've had multiple colors, I've changed it, I've color matched it, I went with red, I have black now, I like black, it kind of calms everything down. Uh, so that's what I'm running with wheels and tires. Shocks, I've just recently upgraded. It had the uh, rough country lift on it when I first got it, just the cheapo mall, mall crawl rough lift, rough country lift. So I've recently upgraded, you'll see, to Bilstein shocks, which everyone loves and raves about. And I truly love them too. Can't can't knock the cheapo rough countries. I I wheeled the crap out of them for eight years, and they just finally gave up on me. If I get eight years out of these, they'll be wonderful. But as you can see, I've changed out the springs. The springs I've recently changed to metal cloak, three and a half inch springs in the front. I will eventually do it in the back too. I'm still running the rough country springs in the back and I've added a three quarter inch lift to kind of compensate for the weight of the tent and all the all the gear I haul. Uh, nothing special, this set my bump stops really low as you can see that they're probably just two or three inches of up travel. And it keeps the 35s out of the fenders. Uh, steering shocks, just basically the steering shock that was on it. As you can see, the steering box has been changed as well. It's out of a Durango. I went to Durango, I think it's a 98 or a 2000 maybe, I can't remember. Durango steering box, bolts right on. Stronger, actually, it's got a slower steering ratio, so it drives very little different than the actual stock steering box, but could never keep the stop steering stock steering box tight so i went to this upgrade virtually the same price no issues drives great love it uh custom made rack i had a rack built Out of an inch and a quarter tubing, put some braces on it. It's roughly 45 pounds, maybe 50 pounds. So it would hold the tent because I knew the tent was going to put 
a lot of weight that I wasn't used to, so I wanted to keep the rack light. So I went to Global Roads Outdoors, James down there in Little Rock, Arkansas. Sent it right to my house, delivered it. I love it. All right, Sidekick One, second generation. So there was one before this that has a little bit less options. This one's got all the options of like a eye camper. It's it's super nice, a lot cheaper, quality's great. I've got about eight nights out of it so far, about six months, seven months, however long I've had it. So I've got to use it quite a bit and there's nothing I do not like about it so far. It takes about a minute, minute and a half to deploy, about two minutes to fold up and pack it up and be ready to go again. So no complaints there. Basically just rock rails or rock sliders, just the cheap Amazon ones. I think they were 175, 180. Served me well. I've actually put uh, Rubicon fender flares on. They're about an inch and a half wider than the normal sports and they're hard to find. Don't get me wrong, but I've also cut the front fenders as you can see. There's usually a blinker in here on the stock if you leave it stock, but I've usually comes down to about here. I've cut all that away. I like the flat fender look, so therefore I had to cut off my blinker in the stock location. I've mounted a blinker under the fender well. You can probably see it's a little one inch round light and about all I've done to the outside of the front. So as you can see under the hood, I have a Vi air compressor. It's a 450P, or it might be a 400. I'm not sure, 400 or 450P. And I have it ran and plumbed down to my grill where I use my air system that I have, that I plumb up here, but I just hit the switch. <laughs> Turns the compressor on, chucks in. So what I have over here is just a dummy. There's nothing hooked to it from behind. So I just chuck my air system in there when I'm airing down and it just blows, blows the air out. But uh, other than that, I have a yellow top. I love Optima yellow top. I've ch recently changed out the ends got air conditioning 4.0 high output I did have a recent heat soak so I've put the heat soak kick on the fuel rail and put the heat deflector on the exhaust manifold I do have a header on it but other than that everything under the hood stock so I will deploy the rooftop tent and just kind of walk you through how easy it is and and how simple it is to do close the hood down here
So yeah, that's basically all it is. Just anywhere you want to go. Probably a minute, minute and a half. Place to sleep. I'll go ahead and give you a tour. You can check it out. It's a full size bed. So plenty of room for two people. So there you go. Uh, now we're gonna tear it down or I'll tear it down and show you how easy it is to pack it up and hit the road to go to the next trail. Super easy, wouldn't have it any other way. Other than that, I think that's about everything for the outside. I'll take you in the inside and kind of show you what I've done there. So in the back here, I have refrigerator. I have my cooking. Cooking equipment is in the rigid boxes. If you see the exhaust here, you probably know that's my diesel heater. I've built it and put it inside inside my uh, rigid box. So they all strap together, they all lock together. They have these locks that inter interlock each other and I love that. Just a cheap refrigerator, 40, 40 quart. I've had it for about four years now. Love it. Got my fire fire pit. Got some chargers for my lights that are actually inside the tent. Converter. Got the little on off. Turn the converter on. Charge up my chargers. And I also have my drone, drone batteries that get charged. So I'll leave that on back there. This is some more cooking, cooking equipment. Right in there is my 17 inch Blackstone grill. Love it, got to use it last weekend. But I just built it and covered it all in carpet so it's super quiet. This is a chair that pulls out. This is my four foot, four foot table. Yes, I can take it out without having to unload everything. Uh, it's a tight fit, which that's, that's what I wanted to keep down on the noise so it, it fits in there pretty snug, but yes, I can get it out. Also built this little table. Fixing sandwiches. I don't know, probably got about 10 bucks in it. Got some stickers from local restaurants and of course my own sticker and then any, anything else. Stained it, put a little hinge on it. It's actually a magnet, so it is super tight, no rattle. Yep. 
I did change out the tail lights and put uh, four inch just trailer lights, flush mounted them. Got my little backup, backup light. It's like a one inch backup light I got on eBay. But nothing special, just, just everything I need. That's kind of one thing about overlanding or camping or whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna say. Just take what you need. A lot of people like to take their house with them every time they go and that's great for you to do. TJs aren't made to haul a lot, so we just kind of maximize, maximize what we uh, can with the space we have. 